Donald Trump, as we told you, is among the candidates campaigning in Wisconsin today, ahead of that state's big primary on Tuesday. Wisconsin is not normally a state that gets a lot of attention from presidential candidates because its primary is so late. But that is not the case this year. And who wins in Wisconsin on Tuesday could shape the race on both sides moving forward. Joining us to talk about this, as well as the governor's travel ban, Professor David Schultz of Hamlin University. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me, of course. Right, let me ask you first. Uh, Congressman Tom Emmer is, is arguably one of the, the best known Republicans in the state of Minnesota. He nearly was elected governor. He had a very popular radio show. He's not endorsing anybody for president. Is that unusual? It's very unusual. At this time of year, it's, it's people have endorsed and Congress have taken sides. It's pretty rare not to have done that. I think there's a couple of reasons why Emmer's not doing it. One, and is, Emmer and a number of other no, prominent Republicans. Uh, cl clear or not, you're right. I think it's because for many of the Republicans, they don't like the current crop of choices. Yes, there's a dump Trump movement. There's no question among some of the Republican Party, but that's leading to people galvanizing around Cruz to stop him. But there's not a lot of people in the establishment party who are also very thrilled by by uh, Ted Cruz either, and I suspect that's part of what's going on with Representative Emmer is that he just 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 does not want to support either of them. Um, probably doesn't want Trump, um, but is is not ready to embrace Cruz, and so he's staying out of this battle. And a number of prominent Republicans from Minnesota who rushed to endorse Marco Rubio, who's only in the race, they haven't switched their allegiance either. Yeah, I think that's really interesting at this point. I think part of what we're also looking at too is if in fact there is an effort to kind of oust Trump. Actually, there's sort of two things here. One, Trump might not get ousted. Um, I think it's still a long shot to oust Trump. And so if he does get the nom nomination, I think it's going to be very uncomfortable for those who opposed him and endorsed somebody else. But two, I still don't think the Republicans have a viable alternative to Trump at this point. And so I think it also speaks into why we don't see the endorsements. Okay. Republic and, uh, Wisconsin is not only getting attention, it's suddenly a big deal. Why is it so critical as, if you go focus on the Republicans? Because a lot of people say this might be a chance yeah. to stop Trump. Yeah. This is the first real serious chance there is to stop Trump. And more importantly, they have to stop Trump now. They being, again, the establishment Republicans, because if they don't stop Trump, the math suggests that Trump could get enough delegates um, going into the convention that he would win the convention or he would win the presidential endorsement on the first round. They've got to do their best to stop him from gathering delegates. And this is the first state where, it's, where there's enough votes to do that. And so that's why it matters on the Republican side. And that if they don't stop him here, um, I see no reason why Trump's not going to march right to the convention and win the nomination. And right now in the polls, Senator Ted Cruz is substantially ahead in Wisconsin. He is substantially about 10 to 15 points, depending on what polls you look at at this point. And, and again, unless the polls are, are wrong, there's, there's going to be a, a derailing of Trump. Whether or not it's fatal is a different story entirely because we know that mathematically, neither Cruz nor Kasich can, can win it on the first round. Trump still has a huge lead. He can still recover from this because coming up further, we've got New York, we've got other states where he has enormous leads. Um, on Face the Nation, earlier we heard a, a panel of analysts uh, talking about Hillary Clinton and their that what they were saying is that there's an enthusiasm gap there that she is actually trailing in Wisconsin according to one poll and polls are narrowing in her own state of New York is she at risk for not getting the nomination? She is definitely at risk at this point. There's only about a 238 delegate gap between her and Sanders. Sanders has won five out of the last six states, I think it is, in, in very hefty margins. The states coming ahead um, are very good for Sanders in terms of both, most northern states. Wisconsin's looking good for Sanders. And you're right, the polls have gone from, think about it, Wisconsin, a 40-point lead for Clinton to evaporating. New York, it was a 40 to 50-point lead. It's now down to 10. Things are not looking good for, for Clinton right now. She is not inevitable. All right, I want to ask you quickly about the governor's state travel ban to North Carolina and the similar law that's being proposed in the legislature here. The governor said he's going to veto it. Is that law constitutional that w would require transgender people to go to the same ba to the bathroom from their birth gender? There's a lot of reasons to think why it might be unconstitutional or illegal. At the federal level, it might arguably violate the 1964 civil rights law. I think this is the argument of the Obama administration. One can perhaps make the argument that it violates the 14th Amendment. And at the state level, we have a human rights law in place from many, many years ago that bans discrimination, among other things, uh, on the basis of sort of transgender identity. I think if this law were to pass, even if by some reason the governor were to sign it, it is subject to, to attack at this at, uh, at, on the state level. And I also think there might be state constitutional grounds as to why 
by it's also um, unconstitutional. So I, I think this is a law that on, on many scores um, is, is, just, is just flawed. All right. And Governor Dayton, of course, has said he will veto it. Well, thank you so much for coming in, Professor David Schultz. You're welcome. All right.